Hello, weight loss winners. Welcome to Lexi's Healthy Dynamic Life. I'm Lexi, and on this very special episode, I have the pleasure of interviewing Anais. We met on Instagram through the Raw Vegan community, and I'm so grateful to have you here. Thank you so much for sharing your time and your wisdom. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm very excited to be here with Lexi, and yeah, I'm excited for this interview, and yeah, excited for everything. <laughs> Yeah, everything's super exciting. I love it. So why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about your story with raw foods, how you got into it, and all the juicy goodness. Okay, sure thing. So I've switched to a plant-based diet around like a little bit more than six years ago. Um, more like out of, uh, I was inspired by my partner who dived a little into the health issues around um the vegan diet and the ethical issues behind it and yeah i just tried it and found it really easy to follow through with it so that was the first step in my transition and around three and a half years ago at that point i was already eating a lot of raw food but still had my cooked whole food plant-based dinners in the evening and i was at that time training for my first half marathon and somehow I was a little bit stuck with my training and couldn't reach my goals that I wanted. It was only a few weeks, maybe like six to eight weeks before the race. I just did it for fun and out of curiosity, want to challenge myself a little. And um, yeah, I stumbled across this Australian couple, uh, Janet and Ellen Murray, and they were actually running a marathon each day for a whole year on raw foods. And they were in their 60s or 70s. So that was so inspiring for me that I thought, well, maybe it can do something for me. I don't want to run a marathon every day, but uh, at least like push my performance a little. So I jumped into the raw thing for about a week. So for me, it was more like this, just changing my dinner to like solids and excluding any other like baked goods or something like that from my diet. So I was already high raw, I would say. Um, and after a week, I felt so much different. So I was able to run more, had more energy, uh, better recovery times, and some more side effects that I wasn't even thinking about that they could do for me. So more mental clarity. Um, I was so joyful out of no reason. My senses were sharpened. And yeah, it was just so astonishing for me. And then at the race, I totally crushed it and like succeeded my wildest expectations. So I just stick to it. And yeah, it gave me so much from then on. It became a whole different journey, like not all about performance, but so many different aspects of my life. They were touched and transformed by that like simple diet change. So yeah, Thank that's you. the story I, how I got into raw food. And now it's been three years, a little more than that. And I'm not all the time 100% raw, but I would say 99%. So yeah, and I'm thriving on it. I love it. <laughs> Yay, you touched on so many cool key points. And actually I had heard of this Australian couple that went on a marathon a day on raw foods. And I heard that they made a film about it. Do you know the name of the film? I think it's running raw, but I could be mistaken. I haven't seen the film yet, to be honest. <laughs> it, I somehow missed it, but I bet it's amazing. <laughs> I, I want to see I it. it. I put it on my list. <laughs> yeah. So how did you come across these folks? I don't know. I think it was my partner at that time. Again, he was doing more research about diet and how to heal the stuff. And um, I think he came across that couple and showed some article to me and I was just, wow, just let's just try it. Like, let's just go for it. <laughs> I love it. And you mentioned that it wasn't even really about performance anymore. It became so many other reasons yeah. to stick so, with it. I don't know. I didn't see myself as being not healthy at that time because well i was already eating a plant-based diet did exercise a lot and i felt good but sometimes you have to feel better to see what's really possible like when i look back at that time i was 
also tired a lot. So I had a lot of like things I was dragging around from my past, past lifestyle decisions and they were not yet like cleared out of my body and still my lifestyle was also not ideal. I was working a lot, very hard, like not a good balance between like work and relaxation and all these kind of things like, and yeah, I don't know, raw food helped me a lot to like even also change my lifestyle and feel like not only okay, but really good. <laughs> and sometimes you have to get to that point to see what's really possible. And there's like still so much more room like to go even more, like go higher in that like range of, in terms of energy, mental clarity and all these things. Like it's limitless potential. I'm very excited to explore what my life could look like when I'm maybe 10 years raw or 20 years raw. Like what could really change in all these things that I burdened my body with in the past maybe that are cleared up and cleared out of my system, cleansed, detoxified, how that my life could then look like. It's really astonishing. <laughs> That's so beautiful. And I'm super excited to see where you are in 10 years also. And me too. Yeah. Like you said, <laughs> it just keeps getting better and better. And yeah. so you did mention that you are about 99% raw. What cooked foods do you choose to include? Yeah, it's not so much that I feel like or I crave cooked foods and then I prepare some cooked foods for me. It's more like, for example, I have a travel, like I live as a nomad, so I don't live in a fixed place for a very long time most of the time. Right now I do that here in Australia, which is really nice. But sometimes I used to travel like every month and that makes it sometimes a little bit hard to stick to the raw thing. And so maybe I have some steamed veggies at an airport takeout or something like that. Or I work in a, a vegan high raw cafe right now. And we also like only do weekends right now so that on Sundays we have a lot of leftovers. So sometimes I take a little bit of pumpkin home because otherwise they would throw it away. Something like that. So I wouldn't do grains. I wouldn't do gluten. Uh, mostly it's some steamed veggies, maybe some pumpkin or sweet potato, something like that. So I don't shy away from eating that from time to time on social occasions or just when I'm in like kind of situation where it's difficult for me to stay raw. Um, but I wouldn't cook it for myself at home. I would just, I just love the taste and the experience of raw food. I don't need it. I don't feel like I crave it. So um, it's just more like an occasional thing where I say, okay, I'm okay with that. I can do that. <laughs> I love it. And did you ever experience a time where you felt cravings for cooked foods in the beginning or at all? Well, the first week was hard. <laughs> the, the transition to like eating salads and not like this warm cooked meal, which I really loved at that time. But to be honest, not so much. Like it was most of the time when I did have cravings, um, maybe for cooked food, it was more like I was really hungry. And maybe I didn't prepare well enough to have enough fruit home, or maybe I had a long day at work and didn't get any breaks, and then I get really hungry. And usually, like our body remembers the most calorie dense foods were cooked foods, maybe even fast food, something like pizza, or I don't know, fries or anything like that, which I really wasn't into even when I was not raw so much. So I always had like a healthy foods on my plate so that, such times I might feel some cravings but it's not really about the cooked food it's more like I need some juice like <laughs> I need to fuel myself and usually when I then go for like big smoothie or something it's all all okay again so yeah mm, I love smoothies too if you That's have to choose one food a raw food that you could only eat at every meal for the rest of your life what would it be coconut water i guess <laughs> yum like fresh. i love my fruits like papaya mango they are like there's so many good ones but i think coconut water when i would have to drink it like my whole end of my life coconut water would be so like gentle and i would never get sick of it um, I just love it. It's so refreshing. And it actually has like such a great nutritional profile. So there are so many minerals in there. And yeah, I just once did uh, seven days on coconut water. And I've did some juice fasting before, not extensively, like only small here and there. And 
every time it was a little bit hard for me and I like to go back to the, like the solid foods, but with coconut water, I just loved it. I could go on and on and on, but I think we were moving at that time in, into a place where there were not coconuts available so easily. So um, it was just a week, but yeah, coconut water. So good. Oh my gosh. Where were you that you had access to the coconuts? Bali. Oh yeah. yeah. Coconuts are just the best. They were so huge, like this size sometimes. And some of them had over a liter of coconut water in there. And like really, really affordable. When you compare it to Australia here, we also have coconuts, but they are like this size, maybe just 300 milliliter in, in there. And I don't know, three times the price. <laughs> So Bali is like, was my paradise for coconuts. And Malaysia also has really good ones. Nice. If you could only live in one place for the rest of your life, where would you choose? Oh, you're giving me a hard time here. <laughs> so, well, I have been living the last like two and a half years in different places like Nepal, Bali, Kuala Lumpur, um, Thailand a little bit. And so far, I think there are so many more beautiful places in the world. So maybe I haven't found that spot yet, but Bali really comes really close to that. So yeah, it's beautiful. Like there are so many, like such a mixture of different people there. And it's really easy to like get to know other people. And it's really an exciting lifestyle there since it's so mixed up with, I don't know, people and food and culture and it's also a very spiritual place uh, if you're in the right spot because it can also be very touristy. <laughs> but Bali is, is pretty, pretty awesome, yeah. Yay! I went to Bali in 2011, I want to say. So it might have changed since then, but I really enjoyed it. Yes. Like even when, when you would come back a year after a year, you will always see changes because it's growing so fast. Right now, I have some friends that are in Bali right now, and due to the whole situation, it's really quiet. Like, not the touristy kind of, like, you have a little bit of the old Bali, like the old um, Ubud, where people are not, like, crushing the streets and super noise and everything, but it's super calm and peaceful. So, yeah, it changes a lot. <laughs> As with everywhere, so that makes sense. And that's okay. <laughs> yeah. And so I want to circle back to what you mentioned in the beginning about how you achieved a new level of well-being. Like you thought you were doing well, you thought you felt healthy, and then you experienced feeling even better. Can you go into a little bit more detail about that and how you were able to tell that the difference? Yeah, so... In my past, uh, my lifestyle was very busy all the time, especially my teenage years. I was studying so hard and also overburdened my system with things like birth control pills, vaccinations, antibiotics, like not necessarily more than the average kind of people, but enough to make my body feel it. And I was also exhausted a lot. And yeah, raw food helped me. Like my skin was really bad after I went off birth control pills. And there was also a big story of my healing. I was dealing with some depression as well, in, especially in my younger teenage years. But it went on a little bit after that as well. And although the whole food plant-based diet helped me so much to get to a better level, Although I was not really thinking about it as something that I want to heal because I felt that was normal for me. So I didn't see that diet could do anything for me in that direction and was just a normal state I was used to. But when I switched to raw foods, like whole food plant based diet already did a lot for that. But when I switched to raw foods, it really like, I don't know, especially in terms of emotional and mental health. So I was so much clearer in my mind, like it was cloudy a little bit most of the time and that was my normal state. So I didn't realize it that this is not normal. And after that, I was so much, it was so much easier for me to concentrate on something, focus and think and also a new kind of curiosity that came along with it for new things. So I was not so overwhelmed with my world anymore because I was still working in my old job at that time. It was quite stressful, but it was not that overwhelming for me anymore. And I actually had the courage 
to quit my job at some point and leave Germany and live in places like Myanmar or Nepal. So like explore and yeah, start something new that is, can be quite frightening at first. And yeah, my skin cleared up a lot. I'm still having some skin issues, but it's minor now. So I don't wear any makeup. So you can see, for example, that I still have some irritations. Uh, but at that time, like maybe five years ago, my skin was full of acne, really bad. And even when it was covered with like a thick layer of makeup, you could still see it. And um, now that's clearing up more and more. It's still a transition, like healing takes time, especially when it's from something that we have been feeding for so many years, right? Emotionally, physically, mentally. And that's one of the biggest lessons I actually learned that healing takes time and we have to be gentle with our body. When we, I don't know, take certain medications for five, 10 years, we cannot expect with just one juice fast for two weeks to make it all good again and completely heal. For some people that might work and I'm, I'm so excited for them, but for most of the people it takes a little bit more patience and real lifestyle changes on many, many levels to get to a certain new level of health and well-being. And that was the case with me for my skin issues as well as for my emotional health and also for my like energy levels and feeling, feeling vibrant in my body. So it took some time and now I feel like I'm at a really good level. I still see a lot of room for improvement just because I know now how it could be like sometimes we feel like we are really good, but then when we haven't experienced like what else lays there, um, yeah, it's just one level of like our own little evolution. <laughs> I love that. And you mentioned that you recommend, you know, incorporating many lifestyle changes, not just raw foods. What else do you recommend to get to those next levels of health? Yeah, as a, for, for me, it's um, aspects like movement. Movement is really important, like especially we have physical health issues our lymphatic system might be a bit stagnant. So movement helps a lot to like get out, get all the stuff we fed our body with over the years. Um, and also for our mental and emotional well-being, movement can be so powerful. Uh, spending time in nature, um, breathing, breathing properly, and also maybe including some breathing exercises. Like for example, when we are stressed in any way, when we take a few deep breaths, we signal our body that we are calm, everything is okay. And, react, and it will react to it and make us feel calmer, although we might not be at the first place when we start that. Um, so breathing is a big one. Um, social connections, so important, especially with the right people that support us and inspire us instead of holding us back in any way. Um, fulfillment in life, following our passions can be so important. For example, I was working in the packaging industry before as an international marketing manager in Germany. And my success was when the flexible packaging industry, so plastic, was growing. So I was once like celebrating more plastic. And on the other hand, personally, I was like, oh, I don't want that. I don't want plastic in any, anyone's life. And something like that, I felt like I was saying it's okay to separate personal and business life but it's really can tear us apart a little bit. So fulfilling our passion and like live our values can also be really important for a healthy lifestyle. Um, what else do we got? Um, movement, um, yeah, fresh air, fresh water. So when we're drinking the tap water that's, um, that has maybe fluoride in it or when we living in a place where they are burning the rubbish, with, which is in very a lot of Asian places, they do that, and we inhale all the smoke, or maybe we live with somebody who's smoking, for example, that's something that can really hurt our well-being and our health. And on the other hand, living by the ocean, breathing good air, having like your filtered fresh water, maybe it all has an impact on our lives. The products we use like the cleaning products, the beauty products, maybe it all has an impact. So I ditched all the beauty products, to be honest. I just used something like aloe vera leaves, shilajit, papaya. <laughs> 
So these kind of steps, they can all like in every area when you make a shift and a difference, it can have a tremendous effect on your body, on your health, on any level, like physically, emotionally, mentally, and also spiritually. That, those are all great recommendations. I love it. And, but I'm really curious, how do you use papaya as a beauty product? <laughs> so I eat, eat a lot of papaya. He is my staple right now because we get it from a local farmer and he selects like the best papayas for us and we get like whole boxes of them. So I eat a lot of papaya and I was like wondering, well, there's so much leftover. Can I not use it for anything? And papaya itself for eating is all, already good for the skin and for many, many other aspects, but the skin and digestive health as well. But I use a peel when I have eaten up and smear it on my face. And then I let it sit for maybe 20 to 30 minutes and I wash it off. And it's really like the skin is so smooth afterwards. And I also use it for my hair. So before I showering, I smear it into my hair, just taking the skin and putting it into the hair, let it sit for maybe half an hour or an hour and then wash my hair and it's so like smooth and shiny afterwards. It sounds a bit weird <laughs> at first, but when you think about it, don't you want to like put something on your skin, like the biggest organ we have that absorbs so much and as well as on our hair that you would also eat rather than taking any chemicals, right? And it also smells really good. <laughs> I love that. I, you know, I hate, producing waste especially when I eat so much fruit and we compost everything so it goes back into making soil for the garden it's all good but like I love this now I'm totally going to use papaya peels and spread them all over my face and hair and I'll have to let you know how it goes I'm so super excited also also banana peels. yeah I've only heard of banana peels for teeth whitening what else can you use it for I never heard it before, I've never tried it. Next on my list. <laughs> because it's another one that I have like a lot of waste, like banana peels. Ugh. But you can also eat them. So in our cafe, we tried some new recipes with banana peels, like to, I don't know how we did, I think we stir fried them because it's not fully raw. So we stir fried them and, um, but you can also eat them raw, it's really good. You can also put them in smoothies actually. This is a game changer. Do you eat them raw? <laughs> what was that organic only preferably like when you eat the peel with anything better not go for conventional produce you never know what's in there absolutely so what does a typical day of eating look for you I know it, it's gonna be different from day to day possibly or maybe the same thing every day I don't know you tell me it's very similar from day to day it depends on my location but right now I'm in far north Queensland in the tropics here in Australia and a usual day uh, starts with a big jar of a liter of filtered water with some lemon juice in there. And I love juices in the morning, but I don't have always like access to the produce to make like amazing juice, like celery juice is really good, especially for skin issues. And uh, then I would have some papaya for sure, maybe one or two of them. For lunch, I would have um, some smoothie, I guess. Um, a big banana smoothie, maybe some barley grass juice powder in there. I love some ginger or cinnamon in there, some greens maybe. And then for dinner, I would have a big salad, like really huge salad, uh, or some zucchini noodles. That's always the option, salad or noodles, uh, with some like low fat sauce, like maybe the best I like is tomato sauce with some tahini in there. Yeah, really good. Some veggies, maybe some nori sheet. I love that in my salads. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe some sprouts on top, like for a little treat. <laughs> That's yeah. it. So most of the time I have like three meals, I would say. Yeah. Sometimes some snacks in between, maybe some dates in between, but usually I'm fine with three meals, not only because of like my hunger and everything, but also I like to keep it simple and not be eating all the time which works for a lot of people, but I don't know, it's very time consuming. <laughs> and when I'm in the flow with working and everything, I don't like to take too many breaks. It just like disrupts my, my projects and yeah, that yeah. works for me. <laughs> that all sounds delicious. And 
And you are so beautiful and you have such a nice figure. Do you practice any weight management practices like calorie counting or what do you do or not do? So I have never had a real issue with my weight in terms of being overweight or something like that. I was always in the normal range, but I did have some like unhealthy relationship with food in my younger years wanting to look thinner, restricting my calories a lot. So it's more like on the other side of the spectrum. And raw food helped me to see that I can eat in abundance and nourish my body fully and still like stay in shape. So when I would have eaten the calories that I eat now, in terms of cooked food, what I ate before that, I would be like pretty like, I, I might be overweight actually. <laughs> Well, maybe not overweight, but I would, I would not look as I look right now. So I, I feel like I can eat much more, like bigger amounts, but also much more in terms of calories and raw food that I can eat with cooked food and still like staying in my shape. That is really nice because I can fully satisfy myself and eat like until I'm full, no restriction needed. And it's so much healthier and it's so, such a better relationship to food. So a low fat raw food diet helped me to get to that and feel more comfortable in my body. And um, I think that's the key. Like for me, low fat is very important. Whenever I ate like a high fat diet, maybe in Bali, I was indulging in too many like gourmet foods. I felt that it was a little bit more difficult for me to balance my weight. Not in, not in a bad, like in a very strong way, but only like, oh, I felt like a little off in terms of my how I, how I look and how I feel my body. So low fat is the key and how always has been for me, like eating a lot of fruits and filling up with the fruits and in the evening have some like um, veggies and greens with a low fat sauce along with it. And apart from that, more like to um, better shape my body. I really like running, um, I really like yoga. I love to do speed biking actually, like riding the bike a lot back in Germany, but um, I don't have any bike here, so <laughs> it's not working. But yeah, like running and yoga is primarily what I love to not only get in shape or stay in shape, but also, I don't know, unwind and move my body, just feel good. So I don't know, I always felt like when I strive for feeling amazing, instead of looking good, the rest will just follow. So I focused so many years on looking good and I was not looking good and not feeling good. <laughs> and now it's more like I want to nourish myself. I want to feel amazing and the rest just follows easily. I love that. I remember in college in a career preparatory course, we were taught if you look good, you feel good. Mm -hmm. And now reflecting back on that, I'm like, it's totally the opposite. When you feel good, mm -hmm. then like you said, everything falls into place. You look good and everything feels better. So it's a win, win, win. It's also like something energetically. So when you feel good about yourself, I don't know, other people see that no matter how you look. The same like you could have like identical twins one feels very like they look the same, like totally the same, same weight, everything the same, <clears throat> but one just isn't happy, like not satisfied, not okay with their body, don't feel comfortable and everything. And that reflects to other people, like they see that. And for some reason that people doesn't look so good as the other person that may be like vibrant and so happy about life, so satisfied with the body. And sometimes it doesn't matter how much weight you have actually, it just like if you have the self-confidence and you love your body in that moment right now it just shows and the rest will just follow because when we feel good and nourish our body when we have that self-love for ourselves we naturally nourish our body within things we need and it's much easier to like pull through with any things that might be hard for us at the beginning like any healthy habits we want to include in our life that's so beautiful thank you for sharing that and a lot of people are interested in going whole food plant-based or even raw plant-based but struggle with cravings and motivation and getting into the right mindset what advice would you give someone who is thinking about trying it but 
might be experiencing some roadblocks, like it's too hard or too expensive or time consuming, what would you say? So first of all, I think it's important to have a strong motivation, like your why, why do you want to change? And sometimes we think we know our why, but oftentimes we have to look a little bit deeper to get like to the core of things. So sometimes somebody wants to lose weight um, just because they maybe want to feel good or something. Maybe look a little bit deeper. What's behind this? Maybe you want to, maybe you have children and you want to lose weight or be healthier to be there for your children, play with your children. Or maybe you want to like follow your passion in life, but you don't have the energy for that. And if you find your why, it's so much easier to like get up in the morning, do your thing, eat the right foods, like feel good in your body and do the little steps that can lead to the bigger result. And um, yeah, that can be really powerful. Another thing that helped me also a lot is to surround yourself with people that are already doing what you want to do, that are already feeling how you want to feel, that live that lifestyle. So, and even if, if in your place, maybe there are not many people that are doing the vegan thing or are raw foodies, that can be tough. I was there, so I was living in a small town in Germany um, at a time when vegan was something very strange and raw vegan was even more weird. <laughs> so I didn't have any friends that went to that, except for my partner, which was really helpful. But some people don't have anyone who's doing that. And in that case, it can be really helpful to surround yourself in the digital world, like on Instagram, on YouTube, with people that are doing the thing and connect with them and talk to them and build some connections there. And for example, if you want to ditch any, any dairy and meat products, maybe you want to restructure your Instagram account, like you're following and ditch all the people that are doing the meat thing and just surround yourself with people that are doing like the healthy thing and living the life that you might want to live. So that can be really powerful. Since there's a saying like we are the average of the five people that we surround ourselves with because they all like have an energy that they are sharing with us and we pick up to that. And yeah, so that can be really powerful. And for me, it was also the step of leaving Germany at some point and going into places where I can meet more people that are like me or maybe similar <laughs> to get like an idea how an alternative lifestyle could be. And that doesn't have to be your step. You don't have to leave the country, but even like surround yourself in the online world with people that are doing the, the same thing can be really helpful. And yeah, and I think the most important point is to be gentle with your body. So it's more powerful to do like the small little changes over time and be consistent with it than like doing one one big cleanse or something and then be done with it because it can be difficult like it, it's it's also challenging to change and therefore it's easier to change maybe just one thing at a time go for a month see how you feel and once it became a habit and you do it automatically for example having fruit for breakfast instead of your bread with I don't know what you put on your bread <laughs> and that doing that for a certain time until you feel like it's normal it's part of my life and then doing the next step maybe include exercise every uh, three times a week for example and I felt like consistent small changes can go a really long way because they can become they become part of our lifestyle and it's something we can sustain over a long period and like hopefully even forever Absolutely. That is such, such good advice. Surround yourself with healthy people. And most of us are online so much of the day anyway. So what we want to consume is going to influence us. So I oh, totally, yeah. totally love that recommendation. And, you know, just implementing simple steps, building those habits can be so, so influential as well. So Anais, I just want to thank you so, so much for taking the time to share your story and your wisdom and advice. <laughs> it was very nice talking to you and you're doing an amazing job with this podcast and the videos you're making. So uh, I'm really excited for all that's about to come that you will create with that and inspire so many people to like get the tools and the knowledge to make their own changes in life and 
become more vibrant and happy and fulfilled and yeah Yay, yeah thank you. finding their way and yeah that's a beautiful journey and i'm excited for everyone who's watching this and is on this journey right now and hopefully take anything out of this and yeah move one step at a time further to the self that they want to be the life they want to live absolutely and where can listeners find you on on social media yes so you can find me under raw expansion on instagram i also have a website where i'm offering ebooks and some other blog articles on www.rawexpansion.com and if anyone is interested to learn some new recipes on the 12th of july i'm going to be part of the cook show let's cook raw together with douglas graham and I'm making raw vegan Mexican tacos. And everybody can like join, get the things they need for the recipe in advance. They can re register online. Uh, they can find the link below my Instagram profile and cook with me together. And we make Mexican tacos together. So that's, oh, that's gonna be amazing. Everyone needs to tune into that. That's gonna be great. Thank you, awesome. So. Thank you again, Anais. Thank you to all the listeners and viewers. Really appreciate it. And we're so excited to share our passion for raw veganism and health and wellness with you. If you're interested, go find Anais online. If you want to learn more about weight loss, I'm on Instagram at Healthy Dynamic Life. I'm on Facebook. You can join my Facebook group for free. It's called Eat Your Way to Weight Loss. And there's so many amazing free resources available. So don't delay, get started today. Your future self will thank you. And with that, I hope you all have a happy, healthy, and dynamic day. Thanks again. Bye. Bye.